Hello everyone, here's another video on circular motion. This time we're doing a lab. Um, here's the equipment that we had set up and uh, let's just quickly review a few little pieces of this. Um, clearly you can see that there's a, a cylinder that you're holding on to. Uh, ideally this cylinder will be minimizing the friction as much as possible. Um, on the end of a piece of string is a rubber stopper and that's the object that's going to do the circular motion. It's going to be whizzing around above your head in a horizontal plane, hopefully. And attached to the other end of the string, the string goes all the way through this handle, again minimizing friction. And then at the end of that piece of string is another mass. So we're just going to label those so we don't get confused. This I'm going to call the mass of the stopper. And this I'm going to call the mass that is hanging. Both of these we will measure and keep constant throughout the experiment. So the idea is that you are able to spin this mass around and around in a perfect, nice horizontal circular motion, keeping the speed constant. So keeping that speed constant and keeping the hanging mass in equilibrium. In other words, it doesn't go up or down. So that when we drew our free body diagram, this force and this force are equal to each other. Okay. Then you change the radius of the circle. In other words, the length of the string that's poking out the top of the handle. So that's going to be our manipulated variable. We're going to manipulate the radius. Okay, the thing that responds is going to be the speed with which that stopper goes around and around in a circle. So the responding variable is going to be the speed, or what's easier to measure, of course, just using our eyesight and a stopwatch, is going to be the period. Okay, And we happen to know that if we think of the acceleration centripetal, we happen to know that the equation is 4 pi squared r, and in this case it's going to be the mass of the stopper over period squared. Okay, now let's just review a couple of little ideas. So remember that at any given moment during this motion, let's say the stopper is over here, and it's going, um, in this, this way I've got it going kind of clockwise, remember that at any given moment the velocity of this, the centripetal velocity, is um, tangential to that circle, which means, uh, on a previous video we derived this, the direction of the acceleration is at right angles to that tangent, which puts it as a center-seeking acceleration. So this is my centripetal acceleration. It's going towards the center of the circle. And, <clears throat> of course, we know from Newton's second law, we know from Newton's second law, which is probably the second most famous equation of all time, um, that F equals ma. So to create my force equation, my centripetal force equation, all I have to do is multiply by acceleration by m. So centripetal, centripetal acceleration multiplied by the mass, in this case of the stopper, and that's going to give me an equation that I can play with, which is going to be 4 pi squared, our mass of the stopper over t squared. So now let's look at our condition. We're going to need a, an assumption, a condition that we can set up so that we can get some analysis on this and then we'll start uh, looking at the ma manipulated and responding and how we would graph this. So a bunch of forces happening. We've already mentioned that this mass hanging is going to be in equilibrium. And of course, you've probably seen that this force pulling it down is going to be Fg. 
This is going to be the force of tension pulling it up, and those two are equal and opposite. Now, the string holding the stopper is also in tension. So this string up here has a force of tension towards the center, and that is the thing giving the stopper its centripetal force. So we can also say that this green arrow is the force centripetal. In other words, let's bring it, uh, let's start it from the, the force centripetal being equal to the force of tension in the string, which of course is equal to the force of gravity. And we've connected these forces all the way along the string from the force of gravity to the force centripetal. And this is going to give us our condition. So we're going to state that 4 pi squared r mass of the stopper over period squared is equal to the mass hanging times gravity. Now, when we graph this, we're going to graph the, because we've already stated our manipulated and responding, we're going to graph our manipulated on the x-axis, so that's the radius on the x-axis, and we're going to put our responding on the y-axis. Now, if we rearrange our equation here to solve for, for the y, and then map it out onto a graphical mathematical formula, if we map it onto this mathematical equation y equals mx, what we should get is a prediction of the graph shape that we'll get from our raw data, remembering that we're going to be manipulating the radius and responding with the period. So solving for the y-axis, well, that's the period. So I'm going to have to rearrange this equation to solve for period, which is going to give me, let's do that quickly, for pi squared rm, and that's mass of the stopper, over mass of the hanging mass times gravity, and then I have to square root the whole thing. Um, now, I'm just going to bring out the radius, because I forgot to put that outside, so that we have our, um, let's just add that in, there we go, so my the x part of this is the radius, which means the m part is going to be 4 squared, pi squared mass of the stopper over g. And the x part is r square rooted, because that square root has to be a function of the whole equation. So this gives us a prediction. It tells me that my graph shape is going to be a y is x square rooted, and that's a plateaued graph shape like that. That's my prediction. So what we need to do then is straighten this graph. Because we need a nice straight graph so that we can do proper analysis. So my aim here now is to get a graph shape that gives me a nice straight line. So what we've discussed before is that this, now that we've predicted the graph shape, we've predicted that it's a y equals x square rooted shape, which actually we could also say is a, a y squared is equal to x shape. These are both the same thing. This becomes your instruction. This tells you what to do. So to straighten the graph, you essentially do the instruction. In other words, you do what the graph shape is. And so I can pick either of these two. I can either put r on the x-axis as a square function, sorry, square root function, or I can put my t on the y-axis as a square function. And as it turns out, it makes our life easier if we just put the period as a squared function over r. So this is going to give me a straight line. And then, of course, I'm going to take the slope of this. And that slope, we can then analyze. And that's going to look like this. 
So we've just said that the slope of this line is t squared over r. And our condition that we've already set up is that 4 pi squared r mass of the stopper over t squared is equal to the mass hanging times g. And what we're going to do is use our slope calculation to solve for g. Now what's neat here, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We can, uh, let's write this down, we can try and look for an insert or replace the slope value for these terms in the condition. So we can insert slope, oops, I can't spell. I can insert the slope into condition, or I can just rearrange and solve for the slope, which is t squared over r, or I can overlay this condition. Um, so I'm going to put overlay the condition onto my mathematical shape and look for the slope bit. Either of these will work. Um, I'm going to do I'm going to do the insert slope condition because hopefully you can see it's quite easy. This. If I look for it in my equation, is right here. That's the bit that I'm going to replace. Uh, but except you'll have to notice that actually the way that it's set up in the condition is the reciprocal of what actually is going to be the slope. So I'm going to have to replace the bit of my equation that I've just identified in red with the reciprocal of that slope. So that's going to look like this. It's going to be 4 pi squared. And now I put the slope in, but it's the reciprocal, the inverse of that slope, mass of the stopper. And that is equal to m hanging times gravity. So, of course, the aim of this experiment is to uh, show that gravity is 9.81. So we just rearrange this to solve for 9.81. So, uh, sorry, rearrange this to solve for g. So, of course, 4 pi squared, slope to the negative 1, times the mass of the stopper, divided by the mass that's hanging. And that should give you g. So once you've got g... From your data obviously you can do uh, percentage difference or even percentage error and that's fine uh, but I just want to mention a couple of things um, to do with error and error analysis um, and that would be to do with the graphing and then obviously to do with the experimental setup so I just want you to think about what sort of errors you might see on a graph so obviously we mentioned before our prediction is that we're going to get a nice straight line going through the origin right so there's your origin intercept now what ha what would happen if your all of your data was shifted up such that the slope remained the same but you ended up with this y intercept here intercepts the y-axis at this point. Um, obviously, remembering that this is t squared and this is r. Or, again, the slope would remain the same, but your entire data set is now shifted downwards such that the slope is exactly the same, except that you now have this x-intercept. Well, that might tell you something. In fact, if you think about what these lines would actually represent you it means you have this extra piece of information added on um, or indeed with the green line you would have oops why is it equal to m 
equal x, it would be a negative b. So just think about what that might mean for now. Um, the other set of um, errors you might come across would be if the actual slope values were different. So once again, there is our predicted value, but it might be that now your slope is steeper or in fact that your slope is less steep. Again, these would be, let's just put the axes on, t squared over r. And again, I want you to think about what those slopes might mean. And to do that, we might want to think about the experimental setup just briefly. Um, of course, our condition was such that we, we made this statement, um, and that hinged on the idea that the stopper itself was in horizontal circular motion like this. But of course, the reality is, and there's the mass at the bottom, the reality is that when you do this, you've probably noticed the uh, stopper and the string end up being angled down slightly. And of course, our statement is based on this horizontal circular motion. So the actual direction of the center-seeking force, the force centripetal, is there. And notice that we would have an angle here. And the string, of course, doesn't change. So that's my FT. And obviously, you can see now with with um, with the triangle that the FT is actually going to be bigger than the FC. So this condition that we had initially uh, is, is starting to look a bit suspect. And then if we were to look at what that might mean in terms of our conditions and our um, mapping out our slopes, you might be able to make some sort of qualitative statement about the error that you have in your graph. So I just want you to think about these two things. Um, think about the shift of the slope line itself and think about the value of the slope that you're going to get. Obviously, you're going to link that back to how close you are to gravity.